What's going on guys, Mr. Hurricane here and I'm back with another UTSA Dynasty episode as we have reached the end of Season 1 now. I did a live stream a few weeks back and I concluded Season 1, the final game against UTEP and then we went to the off season and went through the recruiting in the 5 weeks of, well it was just 5 weeks of recruiting. And we are about ready now to begin Season 2 in the next episode of this series, but I'm going to recap here what went down in that live stream. Just to uh, end Season 1 now, you can see some of the prospects I was still going for. I had a few recruits. Most of the recruits I ended up getting waited until like, the end of the season and part of the offseason to actually commit. So it was just basically me going after the same guys, like going after a few running backs. I wanted some help on the offensive line, but basically it was a best player, just basically best talent I could find approach with me not needing to fill in the holes of many seniors next year, of course. This is the last game here for Jerron Harris, and so that's a big departure, as he's actually played very well despite being like a 79-80 overall, and he's provided the spark on this team that we want more of, and we have Stephen Kerfess still at middle linebacker, but next year's going to be his last year, so we have to get some guys who can be impact players. Our three impact players this year were Eric Souza, Stephen Kerfess, Fez, and then Jerron Harris, and so we're losing one of those this year, and the next two guys are going to be seniors in the following year, so we're going through the highlights, here's a few highlights from the UTSA UTEP game to close out the season, here Eric Brown makes a nice interception, and then we're going to go back to the ground game, Eric Souza hand the ball off to Evans Okacha up the left side, he's going to get a nice gain here. But UTSA didn't have too many highlights in this game overall, and it all started to go downhill. Pretty much after this throw, where I thought I could get over Little's head here to Evans Okacha, and I could not. It was an interception. I threw a couple more, or two or three more on the day. Just some bad throws, and they were making some great plays on the ball. And here you can see a poor display of tackling, and then myself in a poor display of pursuit trying to get a tackle. It's one of those instances where I sprint past somebody. That gets really annoying. I've been doing it for years. So hand the ball off now, and they go in the end zone later in the game for a touchdown and now later in the fourth quarter it's 24 to 3 we weren't giving up at this point but deep pass to cam jones that one is going to go the distance as cam's going to take this one to the house it was 24 to 10 and then we could not get the job done after that as cam jones makes a couple of dents in the record book and that's going to be the end of the game end of the season for the utsa roadrunners as they lose this game to utep 38 to 10 and after our win in week 12 i actually thought we would have a decent chance of winning this game but i made too many mistakes myself as a player and our defense did a poor job of tackling and so you can see we're going to the offseason now doing some more recruiting and this is one of the players I was looking at a 40 overall prospect because he's an absolute giraffe like a 6-7 receiver he had 45 catching but I was willing to take a chance on him as a red zone threat just to have a 6-7 receiver and here you can see the Heisman Trophy winner finalists and uh, finishing results. We have Brandon Harton of the Georgia Bulldogs winning the Heisman Trophy. And then we have, uh, of course, some records going to be broken probably every year in this Dynasty Mode series because UTSA, after this season in my series, they are a two-year-old school, or a two-year-old football program, I should say. When I took over, of course, if you did not know, UTSA had played one year, and this was their first year in the FBS, and that's why I picked them. It was the best project for me. And here you can see we have a few players leaving for graduation, not too many seniors that actually start. Then a couple of guys who wanted the transfer who I did try to convince to stay, and I actually forget if they ended up staying, but they weren't really like prime players on the team. They were just young guys who wanted to get some more playing time elsewhere, and we're going to get it on this roster. And here you can see some of the pro draft results. Got Monty Ball going in the first round, and uh, of course nobody for UTSA getting drafted yet, but hopefully within the next couple of seasons we can get our first draft pick and start bringing in some more talent. It's all about building the program, and that's how we're we're going to do it. We're going to make some quality players for the NFL, and hopefully things can improve. But you can see here going after Robert Stanley. I had recruited like a bunch of receivers. I went after like 10 at a time, just scouting one after another, trying to find a gem somewhere with good catch and good route running. But of course, when you're going after one and two or even low three star prospects, it's hard to find gems, and especially guys that I actually wanted to step up and play early. And then later in the stream, I found this quarterback named Dallas Rhodes. And because we're in Texas, I thought I'd give him a look. And he was a 5'11 quarterback, very short. And I was looking at his attributes here, not very good. And they didn't give me the accuracy or the throw power. And then surprisingly, I got Eric Hancock to commit. And so I got him instead. He's a pocket passer. He's 6'5", has some good attributes to work with. And so I ended my pursuit of Dallas Rhodes after that because I did not expect to get Aaron, Eric Hancock. Actually, I was giving him some attention, but I thought Baylor would snatch him from me. And then I went after this safety here, Mike Butler. And I'm getting a crazy amount of points right now because he was part of my recruiting advisor thingy. The, I got a bonus every time I was doing anything for him. And then I went through a second week 
of doing and I leapfrogged like seven teams into the first place spot and then I ended up scouting Dallas Rhodes and he had very good attributes as well but 6'5 quarterback a little bit better attributes as Eric Hancock to start out with so Dallas Rhodes would have been nice probably to have as a, a red shirt but I'm going to go with Eric Hancock and I'll let Dallas Rhodes go elsewhere and then we finalized our draft class and actually compared to a lot of schools of our kind of talent level and where we are as a team we were a lot better than like a set the 75th best recruiting class which is good of course where we were and then you can see here the new roster and how players have progressed Evans Okacha one of the players who progressed the best with getting six plus to his overall rating and then just some gradual improvement across the board I think this team is gonna be a lot better in season two well I'm not sure actually how much better it's gonna be but I forget how many players I had that were like 60 overall and now I think I'm gonna have a lot more in the low 70s high 60s I mean it's all a work in progress and so it's all about getting that young talent building up this team and so far through season one I have really enjoyed it I'm excited to get going on season two and I'm excited to be making these videos here once again and so you can just see here we're finishing up the last bit of training as pretty much all the players went up like four or five overall it wasn't really anything that was major and I don't think anybody went down I didn't see anybody that did and then we had to cut some players and then worry about red shirting. And I had three running backs that I recruited. One was a Juco transfer, then two true freshmen. So I'm going to put one of those guys with the red shirt. So I, I don't need to carry five running backs when, when I can just have one guy be red shirted and play better later. Or just use him more later, I should say. And then I did a few more on the line and then on the linebacker core as well. I have Dominic Carter here who I almost put a red shirt on, but I made him a promise that I would not. And so I'm going to have to hold off on him and he's gonna have to be a third string linebacker this year maybe play elsewhere and try to find him a spot to play then I realized that Kenny Harrison was actually an all-american we had an all-american in season one he's an all-american returner so that's pretty cool to have a first the first all-american on this UTSA Roadrunners team and then we go into the custom schedule for 2013 and of course I said Colorado would be our opener because they took Zach Arnold away from us our middle linebacker prospect I'm not sure who I should be more mad at actually Zach Arnold or Colorado but we're going to go after him in week one. We also scheduled Louisiana Lafayette for a game, although Tulane is in New Orleans, which I did not know until after the stream. But we'll play Louisiana Lafayette anyways. They're a C-minus team, I believe, and that's kind of the talent. I want to play a, t a lot of teams like that because they're a little bit better than us, and it can help us gauge where we are as a football team. And then we go ahead into the season two of this series, and I'm setting up my recruiting board now. I was going to go after a lot less prospects, like 20 to 25. I wanted to go after some three and four stars initially. I'm not sure if the strategy is going to really backfire on me. I'll see how it goes initially when I'm trying to recruit guys and give them pitches and promise them things if I'm getting any progress. Hopefully it doesn't backfire too bad and I get like a slow start going after like two and three star prospects or different prospects I should say. And hopefully we can get like our first four star prospect because I didn't really go for any last year. Uh, I didn't think that we could be able to get any but I think if I worked hard towards a couple I could get maybe just like one or two or three. Not really sure I haven't done too much with Dynasty mode in the past and so we're ready to go for season two guys that is next up on the way we're opening the season against Colorado and we're going to go and try to get that first victory on the season so thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, and I'll see you guys next time.